Hello, I'm David Monteiro and I'm a tour guide. You can find more information in my website at davidmonteiro.me. Thank you for joining me here and I hope you will enjoy your time. Tram 28 Lisbon, Portugal Tram 28 is the most popular tram route for tourists in Lisbon. Probably is the only one promoted by tour operators, brochures, travel books and other tourist information sources about Lisbon. Note, Tram 28, as it is known, is in fact 28E. It can seem like a minor detail, but it will be vital for you if you are waiting for it at a bus stop. Nonetheless, here I will call it just 28. Related to the 28, a few points I would like to share here and those are an introduction to the history of trams in Lisbon and the 28 in particular. Why is this route so promoted by tour operators? Is it worthwhile or not to take tram 28? Naturally, on the above listed topics there will be a lot to say. However, I will not go into much detail here because the juicy details I will leave them to be shared during my guided tours. An introduction to the history of trams in Lisbon and the 28 in particular. The history of tram 28 is part of Lisbon Tramways history, so let's start from the beginning. On August 31, 1901, the company Compagnie de Carris de Fer de Lisboa inaugurated the circulation of trams in Lisbon. The company mentioned above had 16 vehicles running on a route connecting Cais do Sodré Square to Ribamar, in the Algiers area, along the River Tagus, as an inauguration circuit. The starting of the trams circulating in Lisbon was not without controversy. There were those, outraged by the immense speed these trams were running through the streets, reaching up to 12 km per hour, 7.5 miles per hour, <laughs> well, go figure. They were also saying the trams represented a great danger to passerby and made an infernal and unhealthy noise. Of course, all of this seems ridiculous today. People were only used to animal pulled cars at the time, so those arguments seemed to make sense to many people. What is certain is that after a short time, the trams entered the city's daily life as they had always belonged there. In 1906, the first section of the 28 tram route was set up. Until the 1930s, the route was progressively extended until it reached the way it has today, from Campo Doric to Martim Muniz, two Lisbon districts. However, after the 1960s, with the proliferation of buses, trams' popularity began to fall. At the end of that decade, plans began to emerge to remove trams from circulation altogether. In the early 1970s, many rails had already been removed from the public road, and many routes had been suspended. Nevertheless, in 1974, Many of the country's structural investments were stopped following the consequences of the Carnation Revolution. One of those investment plans that were eliminated was the expansion of the bus fleet in Lisbon. Anyway, the population was still growing, as it was a demand for more public transportation. Not having an available investment as a resource solution it was necessary to recover some of the old trams. So, once again, they became useful to society. Anyway, after a short time, the increased number of cars in Lisbon, plus the increase in pace of life, the inability of trams to run faster, and because running on rails, they couldn't avoid constant obstacles on the busy streets, all contributed to their decline. Even today, modern trams of the kind one could and still can find in large European cities were put into circulation. 
They are few and focused on longer routes, such as between Praça da Figueira and Algés. Why is this route so promoted by tour operators? When one knows Lisbon, it is easy to understand why this route is so popular. It is a very scenic route and goes through typical Lisbon districts with very narrow and winding streets, squeaking at low speed on the old steel rails. It also allows you to appreciate Lisbon traditional landscape. Is it worthwhile or not to take Tram 28? The great Portuguese poet Fernando Pessoa said that everything is worthwhile if the soul is not small. I can't say if it's worth or not for you, but I can list some of the pros and cons of this trip. Some points in favor. The old trams, such as the 28, are part of city's image. The 28 takes a very scenic, typical and useful route to get to know the city of Lisbon. It is enjoyable to ride these old trams. Let's see the less positive side of the story. There are often long queues or lines to get these trams, which can result in a significant waste of time, a commodity you may not have in abundance if you are spending only a couple of days in Lisbon. Because it is trendy, it is often full of people, and having a ride in a crowded tram may not be enjoyable. Many pickpockets take advantage of this confusion usually happening in the Tram 28 to get other people's wallets or other valuables. Well, before I finish, I want to thank the artist Ina Corniva for the illustrations you can find in this uh, article. Ina Corniva is a Russian artist who lived in Portugal for a while and fell in love with our country and culture. The featured illustration is about Tram 28 and the one right above is of Route 15. Route 15 is the most similar to the one made during the inauguration of Lisbon trams in 1901. The illustrations are perfect for this article and the artist honors the trams in representing them in her work. In the description below I will leave a link to where you can see more details about the artist works. Now that you know more about Lisbon trams, take the opportunity to visit the city, have fun and carpe diem. Hello again, thank you for spending your time with me. I hope you enjoyed yourself and please do not hesitate to get in touch with me if you feel the need to. You can check my contact details at my website davidmonteiro.me. The way you can help me is to share this post with your friends and family if you liked it. It is easy for you and extremely important for me. Keep yourself happy and safe and I hope for your next visit. Bye!